longer feeding them and you're no longer listening to their cries. Now you're you know, conversing with them. Now they can help you. Every parent looks to that moment. Now Ismail has grown to that stage where he's now physical and he's healthy and good. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, the name he has, the target, that the subhanahu the laqan, the subhanahu the name he has is Khalilullah. One of the, one of the meanings of Khalilullah is somebody who leaves, he empties his heart for Allah, he fills his heart. It's all empty other than Allah. So here we go. Now Ibrahim alayhi salam, for the sake of friend of Allah, but this is one of the other interpretations. Now here is Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Allah Azza says, Take your child, the one that you waited for so long, take him and slaughter him. But wait. Let's not even jump to that far before that. Allah has ordered him to take him to Mecca and leave him there, which we'll talk about later, but I don't want to discuss it now. When Allah Azza says, take, Ibra take Ismail, after he's grown up and gone through a lot of things, take him and slaughter him. Now listen to what happens here. Ibrahim salam goes to Ismail and he says, I have seen a dream that I slaughtered you. And subhanAllah, imagine coming to your son today as you know, well built and you say, Habibi, come, I want to slaughter you. He says, Ta'ala, I'll show you slaughter slaughter too. Brothers and sisters, the reality is what we have brought forth is something dangerous. The children that we have brought forth, remember brothers and sisters, one of the most mightiest things that you can have in your life, that you can leave behind is that child that makes the half of you. You've amassed wealth. You've amassed a well-educated child, but they don't pray. They're lacking prayer. They're lacking understanding. They're lacking the Quran. They're lacking respect to their parents. Is this what you really have worked hard for? So Ibrahim salam says, Allah has I've seen a dream and the dream of the prophets is reality. So Ismail understood that. He said, I want I, I've been ordered to slaughter you. He says, Yeah, Amity Panda shit. Do what you wish. You submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal, I'll submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. If He said do it, I'll do it. Brothers and sisters, of course, He doesn't slaughter him. Allah replaces him with the caption, with, with, the, with the ram, and uh, it just it, and that's our sunnah to do. And, and subhanAllah, uh, uh, you know, Hajar and her practice of the Sa'i between the two, two mountains of Safa and Marwa, all of this, inshallah, will be included in the future. We'll discuss it in the next time, inshallah. But brothers and sisters, really, Today is a day where you can, you know, subhanAllah, invest. Invest in your children. Invest in the future of those who can earn you rewards. May Allah do not make us taste hardships in the grave. But yeah, if one, you're not staying here forever. Only yesterday. But it's just today, today. Today I heard about a sister, mashaAllah, very wealthy, sold her house recently. Apparently her house is worth about $2 million. Muslim system. But subhanAllah, they bought their first house, which went from around 250 in La Kamba, Sydney, to around 2 million now. But subhanAllah, now, at the age of about 65, she has to go to hospital every three months to replace the filter in her kidneys. Something to do medically. Yeah, Akhwan, subhanAllah, she's in misery, constantly. What benefit? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of enjoyment. What brothers and sisters, what are you investing for? What is your investment today for? Think to yourself. If you don't have examples, come to me. Go to Sheikh Yahya. Go to people around you. They will introduce you and give you numbers to people who've gone through these hardships. They'll tell you, Ya Habibi, I was in your place. I worked hard. It's not worth it. I'm going to die, I'm waiting for my days, they're numbered. I don't want what I've left behind. It is nothing. I worked hard for it, they will enjoy it, and I'll get punished for it. He says, Oh Allah, 
when they die. Oh Allah, allow me to return to do righteous good deeds with what I've left behind. No. Brothers and sisters, we're going to witness again, I'm telling you. Ten days, the Messenger of Allah says, there's nothing more favorable, more beloved to Allah has the idea that you do a good righteous deed in them except the ten days of the Hijjah. And brothers and sisters, one thing that causes me to shiva is that moment where Allah has a dead look to his malaika and again we shall mention it in the last khutbah Allah has a looks to malaika and he says to them, what do these people come for? They're looking at the three million people also in Arafah praying to Allah, crying, the doctor, the surgeon, the, the IT professional, this and that, the poor and the rich everyone praying to Allah has a dead Allah just says, what do they want? They say, ya Allah, they want you to give what are they fearing? They're fearing their hellfire. What do they want reward? They want your Jannah. Brothers and sisters, Allah has a Jannah makes the angels witness. I have forgiven them. Jannah is theirs. Brothers who haven't gone there, you don't, I'm really sorry, I, I apologize. But you won't conceptualize it. It won't mean nothing to you. You need to go there. You need to do Hajj. Walillahi ala nas hajjul bayt in istiqa'at ayy sabiha. It is compulsory on you. When you're able to go to Hajj, you must go. For you brothers and sisters, no matter who you are, one of the brothers was here last Jum'ah. He said farewell to me as he left. May Allah be the blessing. Very, 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 very wealthy. MashaAllah, extremely, yani, it took a long time. We stood and spoke for a long time. And once he understood that it's not a favor to Allah, it's his obligation, he humbled his head. He did give me. It's him, it's not me. Packed up. He says to me, to Hala, he said, he can't. Never tell him. He's one of those people, you don't tell him what to do. He's got, he tells, he manages, he orders. But you know what? Allah told me to do Hajj. I'll put my head down and I'll go to Hajj. He left it and he's on his way. May Allah is a great and grant him the highest ranks of Jannah for his subhanahu intentions. Brothers and sisters, don't miss the opportunity. Go as soon as you can. And if you can't go, utilize the 10 days of the Hajjah. May Allah accept the from us and you. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says when the Sahaba said, Nothing is better than these days, these ten days. Not even jihad, Ya Rasulullah. He said, not even jihad. Except a person who goes out with his wealth and himself and returns with none. Brothers and sisters, Ya Rasulullah to make us feel the emotion, feel the emotion, feel the subhanAllah, the, the extreme benefit of these ten days. Make us feel what this hijjaj are going through. And make us subhanAllah united like the Hajjaj will be. May Allah bring from this Ummah an Ummah that can stand in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he's while he's subhanAllah proud of us. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim in the Khamid al Majid. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma ala Muhammad wa ala فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. The sad reality is that it wasn't long ago that Ramadan had finished and immediately we started to slip into the hands of the shaitan. So Allah Azza wa Jal through His infinite mercy opens the doors of His Rahman for us to return to Allah Azza wa Jal repeatedly. Allah Azza wa Jal says ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِينَ النَّاسِ لِنِبِيطَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُونَ عَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ
Allah has told us in the Quran that the corruption has become apparent in the skies and on the earth. Uh, sorry, on the earth and the la- and the on the land and the seas, because of what the people have brought forth, the evil that was brought forth. And Allah has allowed corruption to spread and to become apparent. The corruption that's causing Syrians to die in the dozens, in the hundreds and thousands. The corruption that's allowing Egyptians to die on a daily basis for no reason. The corruption that's causing Libyans, Muslims, their different sections to kill one another. The corruption that's causing the small child to die because of hunger. The corruption that's causing the mother to cry throughout the night because no, there's, there's no support from Muslim brothers. This corruption, brothers and sisters, is causing the father and the mother to cry throughout the night looking for their child because they've gone on drugs. The Ummah has become in such a severe manner that Allah has did not order it. He ordered the good, but we took the vice. He gave us the Qur'an, but we read something else. He made life easy, but we made it hard. Allah Azza wa Jalla allows us to go through these experiences and view it. And experience what's happening around us, so that we may go back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Return to Allah Azza wa Jalla, brothers and sisters, for there's no salvation in what we're doing. There's no cure in putting more poison. There's no cure in making a person become further and further in darkness. That is not the cure. Brothers and sisters, right now, Allah also mentions in the Quran, Al-Hakum al-Takathur The mutual rivalry has diverted you. It's made you distracted. We are continuously, daily basis competing against one another. It is very uncommon and very rare to see Muslims cooperating and helping one another for the cause of Allah Azzawajal, or for the cause of the dunya, or for the cause of mutual benefit. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's rare. Brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, what has happened to the Ummah is one of devastating you know, effects. So Ramadan has passed, but Allah through His infinite, infinite mercy has allowed us to see another opportunity again. When you come to Allah this much, He comes to, 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 to um, hands fans. When you walk towards Allah, Azzawajal, Allah runs towards you. So here is the days of the Hijjah coming up, very fast. The Messenger وسلم, says, there's no days, the meaning, there's no days more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal, the worship within. You cannot worship Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah loves the actions, the good actions in these days throughout the year, more than the days of the 10 of the Hijjah, the 10 days of the Hijjah. Not even the days of Ramadan. Ramadan, you do so much righteous good deeds of fasting, the days of Ramadan, the scholars would point out that the days of the Hijjah are more preferred. Allah Azza wa Jal loves them so much. What is happening here? What is being brewed? What is being prepared? Something is being prepared, brothers and sisters, for a few that Allah Azza wa Jal has selected. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that you and I will witness it again, or will witness it for the first time. And that is the invitation by Allah Azza wa Jal to His Bayt al Haram, to Mecca, to do Hajj. Ya Allah, we pray to you to make us amongst those who will witness that beautiful, amazing, remarkable Subhanallah gathering. A person who has lived 10, 20, 50 or 100 years, who has committed so much haram, and Allah has done in one instance, in one occasion, in one gathering, is going to eliminate, is going to eliminate He's going to wipe out, he's going to spread, demolish every sin that you've done. Allah is going to have you like you've been recreated, not resurrected. It is like you've come back like a baby. It is like there's no sins upon you. 
Wallahi, if you can understand, if you can conceptualize the meaning of the Akhirah, and the standing between the hands of Allah and the shameful acts that we have all built of sins, and that you can have, Yawaddu Ahaduhum. Allah makes a point about this. That a person would love to give everything in the world to have salvation on the Day of Judgment. He would love to give everything. Now here, subhanAllah, Allah allows you this opportunity. So the people are being prepared now. And I was with, with two of the brothers this morning, getting prepared for the journey of Hajj. The nerve, the excitement, it, it subhanAllah it pierces the heart. You sit there looking at them, you say, Ya Allah, allow me the opportunity again. Ya Akhwan, for the brothers and sisters who haven't done Hajj yet, make a sincere, real intention that Allah has will allow you to go next year. There are people, subhanAllah, who had saved, who were capable, who made the intention, and they were on a journey, and they're about to embark the plane only to be sent back home. It's not time for them. Brothers and sisters, you make the sincere intention and try your best. Don't think you're doing Allah has a favor. Allah has a does not want you to go and spread, you know, spread blood on the floor from the Udhiyah. لا ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولكن يناله التقوى منكم. He wants you to have that taqwa in you. He wants you to reunite with the Ummah. He wants the whole world to see the people from different nationalities, different races, different color, different sexes, everybody, the old, the young, the short, the tall, the female, female, the rich and the poor. Allah is just showing the world that will still come and still gather despite of their circumstances and their situation they will relive the acts of Ibrahim alayhi salam what a man what a man nobody has any doubts no Muslim, no Christian, no Jew can say a single negative thing about the credentials of Ibrahim alayhi salam they all view him, they all regard him highly Brothers and sisters, we're going to embark on a journey that Ibrahim took to isolate the idols, to isolate the, you know, the, the love, the extreme love for the dunya. Ibrahim السلام, brothers and sisters, begins his journey by leaving his father, his family, his community, his comfort for Allah has ever done. For Allah has a, his father will build the statues. He says, Ya Abati, La ta'abud shaytan He keeps making advice to his father, but his father, subhanAllah, would not listen. And finally he warns him. He warns him that you have to get out or you know he's going to throw him out. Ibrahim salam leaves and continues making dua to, to Allah Azza wa for his father until he finds out that that was not appropriate to do. Ibrahim is thrown into the fire. Why? Because he said, La ilaha illallah. Because he believes that Allah has the only. Allah has the And brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, listen to this ayah. Listen to this ayah carefully and put yourself in this situation. Allah says, If qala lahu rabbuhu aslim, qala aslam to the rabbil alameen. Ya Allah. Allah just said, Ibrahim, submit to Allah. No ayah, no words, nothing in between. Qala aslam to li rabbil alameen. Khalas. You want me to submit to you, Ya Allah? I'm submissive. Finished. No explanation in between. No why, if, or where, or how. No, 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 no. Ya Habib, your river is haram. But you know, la. I submit, alcohol, submit, smoke, submit, salah, submit, this job is wrong, submit, don't look at the hand, submit, there's nothing in between. What happens? 
what happens when this happens? Allah Azza wa Jal many years later. In fact, 83 years the Messenger Ibrahim السلام, wishes and admires and prays and begs and makes dua. He knows it's going to happen. He knows it's inevitable. He knows I'm asking the one who can do. I'm not stopping. I want it and I will get it. And Allah Azza wa gives him Ismail and he gives him his heart. Brothers and sisters, there's something remarkably important here. When you submit so much to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah brings from your progeny, Allah brings from your offspring, from your children, people who will, children who will submit to you and submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. You do the submission and Allah will make them submit. Of course there is the story of fool, there is the, you know, the children of Adam, there is all those incidents. But in general, brothers and sisters, submit to Allah Azza wa Allah, brothers and sisters, I am so ever grateful and I pray to Allah that He would safeguard my children and your children. It is an immense task, it is difficult, it is mind boggling it is complicated. Without the mercy and help of Allah, I cannot bring up my children. I cannot, I fear for my children. The people, the government, everyone here does not care about you and I, brothers and sisters. Come to this land, no problem. But let me have your children and they're willing. Let me have your children and they're willing. And we've had drug people, children, offsprings who have taken drugs and they've died on drugs. We've got them in zina and they've died on zina. We've got them on riba and they've died on riba. We've got them convert leaving Islam. Ya Allah, don't make any of our children like that. But you see the matter, brothers and sisters, Ibrahim is a beautiful role model. You want me to submit, I'll submit. SubhanAllah, what happens soon after that? And there is so many things about Ibrahim السلام, which we'll discuss inshaAllah. But let's take one thing, one incident. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَمُ السَّعْيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُ قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَمَّا تُؤْمَرُ فَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal did not trial Ibrahim السلام, with the fact that he had to leave his family. He had to leave his comfort. That was one. Then he had to subhanAllah migrate and go to Palestine. And then he had to go and he went to Egypt. And he got, you know, subhanAllah that the, the king of Egypt took his wife away. And Allah Azza wa Jal returned her with her daughter. So subhanAllah, one thing after the next happened to him. And then he was thrown to the fire. And Allah Azza wa Jal made it. قُلْنَا يَا نَا رُقْكُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمِ Lord alayhi salam believes in him. There's so much happening there. But Ya Rabb, I want a child. Ya Rabb, I want a child. So Allah Azza wa Jal gives him a child. Does the, stop, does the test stop there? No, it doesn't stop there. Brothers and sisters, believe you me, there are things that I've gone through the past week. And I'm not talking for myself. I'm talking for myself on your behalf. For I know you've gone through the past week and the last month and the last year with some certain difficulties, some scenarios, illness, losing somebody, losing some wealth, opportunities, something has happened, difficulties. But brothers and sisters, nobody Nobody amongst us has gone through what Ibrahim has gone through. Yet he persisted. He persisted, brothers and sisters. So Ibrahim now has this beautiful child that he loves. And then it grows. The sun is growing. And my beloved child, the one I've loved and I really want so much, there's a still a test coming up. We'll talk about the test. In the second khutbah, but brothers and sisters, in the meantime, think about the reward that Ibrahim السلام, which we'll talk about, and the trials that he went through. Your reward may not be the same as what Ibrahim السلام's reward is, but your inevitable private reward, which is general, can be yours. But you have to go through some, some trials.
think think about what you can leave for Allah Azza wa Jalla so that He might give you that paradise. That reward.